Hello my magical little moon muffins. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make tallow spell candles. Now if you aren't familiar with what tallow is, it is a refined beef fat product. Now before we get into the candle making for our spells, let's get into collecting the beef fat so we can accumulate enough to make candles. Before I get started on how to save and render your beef fat, I want to make it very clear once this is refined, which we will be doing the refining process three to four times until everything is clear, your product will be neutral. There will be no fragrance. It'll be a bit softer than soy wax, so I do recommend keeping it in the refrigerator um, and make sure you have some humidity control. If you want to charge your tallow under a lunar cycle, I would do it in an airtight container just for one night on a windowsill. I personally would not take this outside because it's an animal byproduct. It's gonna attract a lot of pests and rodents and you just don't want any problems like that. Also, all apologies for like the vlog style camera. This has literally been my only opportunity to have the kitchen completely quiet to film this video for you guys in the past two weeks. And I don't have my tripod down here. But the show must go on. Anyways, before we get into the candle making, let's collect our beef fat. And how I do this is when my family and I do eat beef, especially ground beef, we will cook it off without seasoning it. No salt, pepper, no mirepoix, which is your onion, celery, and carrot mixture. None of that shit. Just cook the meat itself and then drain everything out into a Pyrex cup or like a ball jar. And then you can just continue your cooking process from there. You can add all your veggies and everything else. I promise you, it will be just fine. So once the beef fat is at room temperature and slightly solidified, similar to butter at room temperature before you're baking cookies, how it has to be a bit soft, it's easy and pliable. So I'll then transfer that to an unrefined tallow jar in my freezer. And I don't have to worry about processing it all at once or cross-contamination. I do need to make sure it is completely at room temperature first though. You don't want your hot ass oil to be poured into a frozen jar because once we collect enough, then we'll be able to have a reason to refine it. It is too tedious to refine a tiny amount of tallow at the same time. So I highly recommend just get a jar and then once that's full, get a couple more. A couple steps, you can clean it you can keep that in there probably for a lifetime. So now we have enough unrefined beef fat saved in our freezer and it's time to make some tallow. What do we do now? We've never had to ultra refine an insane amount of fat in any restaurant that I've worked in. Me, once I get about a kilo or around two pounds of fat, then it's enough to go through the ultra refining process. It's really simple, you guys. It's just a bit tedious though, but you take a pot with five cups of water, one quarter cup of sea salt. Please do not use iodized fucking boomer salt. Please let's move past it. We are in the 2022s. We're not in the fucking 70s anymore. Let's just let it die. Anyways, got your water, your salt, and then your amount of tallow. That amount doesn't really matter. You can have two kilos in there. You're still gonna have the same amount of water and salt. You don't have to double that. I know it sounds weird. I don't know at what point you would have to because I'm assuming at some fucking point it would be just too much. But we're just gonna go with that. One kilo or two pounds of unrefined beef fat, five cups of water. You can use moon water if you want to. You can set your intentions to take out any negative energy from that animal or animals in this case, especially with how fucked up farming practices are these days. I really think it's important that we stay in tune with nature and respect nature like all of our ancestors used to. That's just something that you can do. You don't have to go through all of these ritualistic steps, but in my experience, I can definitely feel that energy shift. Now, once you have all these ingredients in your pot, you're gonna let it simmer at about a low medium heat. And if it's just starting to bubble a little bit, you can go to medium. Just play with it a little bit. It should be just kind of fucking humming. It shouldn't be screaming. It shouldn't be loud as fuck, like some middle-aged pick-me girl at the bar, woo-hooing around all the married men. It should just just fucking be. Once you have that momentum down, you're gonna let it ride for about 45 minutes. Once it's done, we're gonna transfer all of that carefully because it's gonna be very hot and fat oil is very dangerous 
when you get burnt from it, I'm gonna transfer it to a metal bowl specifically. Because once it's completely cooled down to room temperature, I will be able to wrap it and keep it in the fridge overnight. And while I do that, the salt water is gonna start drawing out a lot of those impurities from our product. The next day, you're gonna see a layer of gunk on the bottom of your tallow. Having a bowl and it come out in this like nice disc is really convenient in my opinion. You're gonna shave off all of that gunk with a spoon, with an offset spatula. Don't use a knife, please, fuck. Bench knife is fine. I'll show you what a bench knife is, cause I just, I listen, seriously, like I really try hard, but I, I forget that people don't know a lot of this shit and I'm not trying to be fucking hell, I know everything. I'm not trying to be one of those bitches. I really am trying, I forget. So if I come, if I say a bunch of shit and you guys are like, what is that? I, please understand that cooks, we have a completely different language for a lot of shit and it gets a bit weird. My husband and I know this because we talk kitchen talk all the time. He's also a chef, if uh, you guys don't know. So I'll show you. Just for the record, this is a bench knife. You would use this to scrape up excess dough from your bench or countertop. You can use it for a lot of things, but it's not like technically a knife, but this is fine to simply away from you, not towards you, all right? Take away all of that gunk off your towel. All right, and now we're just gonna repeat the exact same process with a new set of water and salt this time, as long as we need to until it is completely clean the next day when we take it out and it's solidified. So just remember a couple tips, guys, because there's a lot of fucking goofy ass people out there, I know a lot of them, who just skip 30 steps in between everything and they're like, how come it didn't turn out the way it's supposed to? It must be your fault. I've heard it my entire career. You have to do, it is, it's just very important that you let this set at room temperature before you put it in your refrigerator, not just take it hot and boiling and pop it in the fridge, fuck up the temperature in your fridge. Now everything's in the temperature danger zone and you're gonna fucking off everybody. Thank you very much, John Thick Skull, because now fucking everybody's sick. John Sick. Please, if you wanna be an asshole, don't do that because you can get into serious trouble. A lot of people on the left-hand path community within occultism kind of forget that there are legal consequences to baneful physical fucking actions and it's not the same as magic where you can sit there and just cast shit at people and watch them fucking kick over. I really feel compelled to remind people not to act that way when it comes to food in real life because people have contacted me via TikTok plenty of times like, you have anything I can poison my boyfriend with? <laughs> I'm just like, bitch, you should just delete your account at this point because I don't want fucking anybody calling my ass. I'm tired. I don't need to fucking deal with everybody else's drama. So anyways, now on, on average about three or four rounds, if you have a lot of gristle in your product, especially with the connective tissue, if you're not using just like ground beef or mints as they call it here in Australia, um, you might have to do it a few more times because you have to break that stuff down and it will probably be a lot longer to render it down with the connective tissue. In this sense, I'm talking about using ground beef because I'm assuming most people would have more access to those products. So now we're gonna get to the candle making. You get your candle stuff. Sometimes I upcycle tea lights. Um, I'll just pop them into an old one, not for spell work, but just like for my household because I do like a nice vibe. And I'll save the tins. You can also buy them online. A really cool tip about candles though, is we've been using them, tallow candles in particular, since 500 BCE up until the 19th century. Now we have the science and the technology for more advancements like refining our soy wax and whatnot, which I don't know how to do, but I would super be down to learn how to do that because I'm super, I really fucking do now. I am all about improvising with what you have I've definitely used a Pyrex cup and a pinch to melt down wax or tallow, etc., to make candles. Please just break down and pay the $12 to $15 for those candle pour things like I recently got because your life will fucking change forever. It is a pain in the ass to clean greasy fucking fatty candle wax out of Pyrex. And you can clean it in your back sink. It fucks off with everything else and you don't have to worry about it. I just read, and then, it's, and then it sits perfectly in your double boiler as well, because I had to like do the double boiler or put it in the oven and all, I've, I've done it all and it's so stupid. So please just invest into this thing. Just look online 
everywhere, you know. Do I, do I need to do that for you too? Fuck. I'm super kidding. I just don't know where you live in the world. Once we have like the exoskeleton of our candle ready to go, then we can make sure that our tallow is just gently melted. It doesn't have to be at a specific temperature. I believe regular wax is like 190F. A couple tips I want to share about cross-contamination real quick before we move forward. Tallow can absolutely be used for cooking and it actually has a lot of nutritional benefits that we've been lied to because, you know, they don't want us to fucking think that something's healthy for us. They want to give us the, the alternative to that, which is like margarine, which is made out of fuck knows what. But once, you know, when you refine this product, you can use it for cooking and soap making, etc. I recommend if you have leftover tallow from candle making, like, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to gauge how much exactly you need. You might not have enough. You might have a lot left over. I recommend placing it in a jar, not all the way up, but like halfway. Let it cool off before you put the lid on and then label it tallow for candles. That way, if you wanna use your tallow for cooking, you can kinda of keep those, you can kinda of keep them separated. Now I have offspring super stuck in my fucking head and I am not gonna be happy about that. Oh shit. Personally, I like to add my essential oils after my tallow's poured. I'm sure people who know what they're doing far more than I do would say, what the hell are you doing? After I add my essential oils, for these are prosperity candles that I made for personal use. Um, I added some prosperity blend I had left over from some incense cones that I made a while back. I don't think I posted a video about that, so I probably should soon because I do need to make a few different types of blends and I've been meaning to do that. So yeah, if you guys are interested, I actually have a, some really good tips on making incense cones. But okay, ADHD, let's get back on track. After I added my Prosperity Blend, I also add some biodegradable pastry glitter. If you watch some of my other kitchen videos, you guys will know that I've been really just connected with using pastry glitter sometimes in my practice for my kitchen magic because it's a lot of fun. It's really great for the environment. It is a bit of an investment, but a tiny bit goes a long way. So for the sake of color magic, I used gold because that is association with wealth and prosperity. And these are what these candles represent. After our candles are set, I personally pop mine into little containers and then place them in my back. I have an apothecary fridge because I am in the subtropics and it is springtime here and it's gonna start getting very humid. It's just better for temperature control. The candles, when you take them out for use, they don't get sweaty or anything like you'd think, like from condensation. If anything, they dry them out a little bit and it makes them last longer. So I definitely recommend that. I don't have any problem though with like my larger jar candles. They've been totally fine and they're not attracting pests. Like I said, all of that stuff has been completely processed out now. All right, my little moon muffins. I hope you have a fantastic day and thank you for hanging out with us for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And if you have any other ideas for things you'd like to see, please let me know. I am always open to cool suggestions. All right, you guys take care and I will see you very soon.